Hello, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome. It is a warm welcome as well with the sun beating down to Motorland Aragon, the venue for round 13 of the MotoGP World Championship. My name is Jack Appleyard and welcome to Inside the Paddock Live. This is uh, just giving you a little bit of a flavour, a little bit of a taste of the hustle and bustle that's going on inside the paddock here in Spain. Of course, the big news coming into this weekend is the debut of Maverick Vinales. Two days testing at the Masano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli, and that was it. Good enough. I'm happy with the RSGP. A week later, here he is. He's just had his first taste of MotoGP action as well, so who better to speak to than his brand new crew chief, a name that might not be familiar to you guys at home for now, so hopefully we can bring a little bit more inside. Giovanni Motorola moved up from the test team, and hopefully we should grab him. Let me just go and have a word with old Zoccarato, the Aprilia Press Officer. Hello, do you have Gio for me, please? Maybe. Okay, okay, go and have a look, go and have a look. Let's see, hopefully he can come and have a chat to us. As I said, he's been with Aprilia a very long time. He was actually the chassis engineer in 2019, has worked with the test team in 2020 and 2021. So obviously when Maverick came in, was initially with the test team at Masano, the relationship bonded that grew from there. And here he is now as a MotoGP crew chief in the Aprilia racing team, Grassini. But let's see, is Zaccarato coming? He's having a good look. We do know that Maverick's in there how can we tell so he's got his scooter right there with his uh, little girl's name nina on the side of it she's here this weekend as well we saw some lovely images on instagram earlier in the weekend of him posing in his brand new aprilia gear with his little young daughter as well incidentally he finished 19th in the opening session 2.1 seconds off of the pace but don't read too much into that because matt marquez was 0.9 of a second clear of everybody else still a positive start and here we have Gio. Nice to meet you. My nice name is Jack. You. How are you? I'm Ronnie. Fine, Lovely thanks, to meet fine, you. Thanks. I've said I've one better. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Talk us through it then. Maverick's first taste yeah. of the RSGP yeah. here yeah, yeah. in Aragon, and also your first taste in MotoGP action with him as well. Yeah. How yeah, did it get on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We work uh, good and very hard in Misano, and we are carrying on that uh, that work, that job uh, here. We did a two long run because uh, for us, for now, the most important thing that is we have to, we have to keep confidence with the bike. This is the most important thing. We are not looking at the lap time. We are not looking at the, the position on the on the on the grid, and we are only working to find a better way to stay good with him. So talk us through yourself. You've been with Aprilia a long time, I understand. What's your career like up to this point? I'm uh, in Aprilia racing from 15 years. I started like a designer yeah. for the chassis or the, the, the chassis part of the bike. Then I moved to the, um, to the track work. I started on the CID, the Italian Championship. I moved to the European Championship, then to the Superbike Championship, and then I to the MotoGP in 2017. That's a, a proper career path. You've got to do <laughs> super bikes, super stocks, you yeah, I see everything. I know, it's great to see. Uh, Maverick, of course, we've already seen on the bike. You've been working hard to make him as comfortable as possible. No. No? no. Okay, we've seen that there's some modifications on the fuel tank, similar to what he had at Yamaha. Nothing, Nothing at all. We prepared a uh, lace bike. Okay. He sit on it and he say, okay, it's good. Wow. It's ready. Do you need some adjustment for the levers? Or... No, no, no. It's okay. It's perfect. After the first day in Misano, we move a little the, the footrest. Right, okay. Nothing more. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And talk us through his adaptation from the inline four to the V4 as well. The characteristics of the bike, of he course, different. How is, he, how is he managing that? We were scary about that because we know that the, the behavior of the bikes is really different. But uh, when he's up on the bike, uh, he comes in uh, after the first run, he was smiling and we understand that maybe the work was uh, less hard than uh, what we expected. Okay, he's still working for the turning, for uh, the braking, because of the, the how the rider has to, has to move and has to work with the bike is different. But he's understanding very fast. And we hope that this is the way, is, this is the, the, the starting uh, method. I'm, I'm just finally, before we let you go, 
What are the expectations this weekend? 2.1 seconds off in free practice one. <laughs> Where do you hope he is by race day? I see nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> well, good luck anyway. Lovely thank to meet you. Thank you. And give much. Maverick our best as well. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. much. Right. What a lovely guy. That's Gio then. Nice for you guys to meet and a little bit about his career path and history as well. He's really risen through the ranks, hasn't he? Fantastic to hear. Clearly a super intelligent guy as well. And you can understand why the relationship has formed as quickly as it has with him and Maverick. He seems a, a fairly uh, charismatic guy. And, and Maverick is similar as well, of course. You know, it, it's very difficult to comment on what has happened with Maverick this year. It's totally unprecedented. And, you know, what he's done, he's even admitted, wasn't right. But, you know, that's not his character. From interviewing him, from speaking to him, away from the camera, he's such a nice guy. Nobody really has a, a bad word to say about him. So it does come as a surprise when he, he did the thing that he did back in Austria. But hopefully, I'm sure you guys at home, like me and everyone here, wish that it's a, a clean slate for him and his new relationship, his new partnership with Aprilia is going to be a positive one. Right, I reckon we're going to walk down in this direction because right at the end of pit lane, hopefully, if I stretch my legs, we'll get there in time, is the Petronas Yamaha SRT Hospitality. Now, I don't know if he's going to be there. I'm just kind of hoping that he is. But we do know that Andrea De Vizioso is in the building somewhere. Obviously, if you're not aware, extremely likely we heard from Lynn Jarvis at Silverstone that the, the deal is almost done, 99% there, that he will be jumping into the Petronas Yamaha SRT squad for the remainder of this season and then likely in 2021 as well with Franco Morbidelli moving up into the Monster Energy Yamaha box as well. On that, we did hear actually this morning from Valentino Rossi that maybe Morbidelli's surgery is a little bit more complicated than we first expected. Obviously, it was a, a, a big, big surgery on a, a ligament damage within his knee. So hopefully he can be fit and firing for Masano in one week's time. That's the plan anyway. Dovi is expected to be there. So if we can get a glimpse at him, maybe grab a word. I'm not sure. We were told yesterday he's not doing any interviews because there's nothing to uh, speak about. But I like to be a bit cheeky sometimes. And if he's there, we might just throw a question to him and see what's happening. So as you can see, team boxes behind me. Who have we got coming up here? KTM. Interesting to talk about them. Brad Binder and Miguel Oliveira, according to our pit lane reporter, Simon Crafar, believes that there is a new chassis for them. We don't know for certain yet. Simon just, obviously, if he says it, he believes it is, and you're a brave man to doubt him. We will be asking both of those guys later to see whether it is a brand new chassis because it's been a bit of a mixed bag, really, for KTM. You know, the Oliveira and, and obviously Binder as well with that race in Austria have had some real moments of brilliance so far this year. But ever since that crash for Miguel in Austria, he's not been himself and he was struggling this morning as well. So hopefully that small tweak will be enough to see the KTM boys back challenging at the front. Right, Patronus Yamaha is over your shoulder to our cameraman and there doesn't look like there's many people there. So my plan has failed completely, which is a real shame. But if you stay tuned on MotoGP, you may well see Desmo Dovit out and about on the circuit. So that's a reason of plenty to tune in for FP2 later on. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed that. And what a nice bloke Gio was as well. See you later.